Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Boris FX, and today we're going to show you how to do a replacement of a logo inside of the Mocha Pro insert module. We are going to use the Mocha Pro plugin inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. We're then going to use the Warper tool inside of the insert module and also automatically generate motion blur based on the tracking data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original plate and I'm going to move it from V1 to V2, so video layer 1 to video layer 2. Now I've actually painted a insert for this coke bottle and I'm going to drop it right underneath my footage. Now I want you to notice that this insert is the same size as this footage. That's going to become important later when I do my insert because when we do a insert we like to have no edges on the object we're trying to insert. So my original plate is 1920 by 1080 and my insert is 1920 by 1080. Now we're going to jump to our effects browser and we're going to select our video effects, Mocha by Imaginator Systems, Mocha Pro, and drag and drop that right onto our original footage. In my effects controls, I'm going to twirl down my module renders and I'm going to say, hey, we actually want to do an insert layer, so please use video 1 as my insert layer before I start tracking. Now I'm going to launch Mocha. Because our view screen was set to full resolution, we're reading all of the full screen pixels from our timeline right into Mocha. I will select my X-Spline tool and I will draw a shape right around the logo that I'm trying to track. Now the important thing here is to understand how Mocha works. Mocha is a texture tracker, so we're going to follow the texture of this logo. Notice I'm avoiding the bottle as that's very shiny and that could mess up my track. We're going to track translation scale and rotation only and we're going to rename this to Bottle Track. We're going to hit Track Forwards and Mocha will follow this texture through the scene. Now I do want to turn my surface tool on and I want to align my surface tool to the area that I'm trying to track. The reason I want to do that is because I want to be able to see what my track is doing. You can't always trust the shape to tell you what the track is doing. So we're going to continue to track forwards and now you can see that the surface tool is following the logo that I want to replace. So the track knows where to look because of the shape and the surface tool tells us what the track is doing. Alright, so that looks like a nice rock solid track to me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my insert clip and I'm going to assign V1 as my insert layer, right? Because we had already assigned it inside of the plugin. Now I just select insert layer and my logo will be dropped over my original logo, just like that. So if we go to none, there's before and here's after. And you can see it perfectly aligns to my surface tool. I can move my surface tool and my logo will move with it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my insert module and I'm going to use my zoom tool to zoom in and see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the show mesh warp tool and you can see I now have a very small mesh warp attached to my logo. I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to actually align this more to the curved shape of the bottle using my warper tool. So this is how you end up replacing an object that is square with a curved object. To elaborate a little bit more about this mesh warp, I can actually have several layers of control of my mesh warp. So if I come in here and go to like level two or level three, or level four, you can see that I can actually increase my mesh warp detail by quite a bit. We're going to go to mesh warp three and we can actually come in here and start to adjust based on this curve happening on our bottle. And that will actually animate if we make keyframes, but we don't need to make keyframes. But just to show you how this works, I can very quickly change the curve of this object. Because this is a really simple curve, I'm going to leave it how it is. But if this were a logo on a t-shirt that was moving or a hat or a complex object, I could really get in there and change the detail of my mesh warp. 
Now, we're going to select Motion Blur in our render mode, and we're going to save this, and we're going to close it. Now, inside of my Mocha plugin, I'm going to select Render, Insert Composite, and you can see that this will render right back to our timeline. And you can see that it renders with Motion Blur. Now, even though this label matches the coloration of the logo beneath it, I kind of want to cheat some darker edges on either side of my insert. So to do that, I'm actually going to add a vignette to my Mocha Cola Late. So let's come in here and go to Effects, and let's go to Vignette. Let's just drag a BCC vignette right onto my Mocha PNG. And we're gonna just, and I'm gonna very quickly adjust the vignette to the look that I want, mostly by adjusting the values to the square property and the softness property. We're gonna switch the combine to multiply. We're gonna change the color to be a little bit more of a red. We're gonna change the opacity to about 70%. So there's our nice soft vignette. We're going to select this and we're going to nest it. We're gonna call this vignette. And now back in our V2, our vignette will populate back to our bottle. If you wanna see it play at speed, you may need to render your effect into out. So from here, all we have to do is render our shot. And here's our before, and here's our after. Special thanks to Pond5 for their generous donation of this footage. If you need any stock footage, you can go to www.pond5.com, and you can even find this specific clip to practice on. All right, guys, I am Mary Poplin with Boris Effects. If you have any questions, please find us at www.borisfx.com.